Hey everybody, welcome to the 1804 show, chapter two. I'm your host, Dollar Will, and this is episode episode 82. Yeah, I just wanted to you know shout out, thank you to everybody who tuned in yesterday. And like I said, man, we, we, we just go keep it going. You know, and I wanted to, you know, wear a college shirt this time, you know, be real classy, be, you know, real gutter, because this is about to get very controversial. And again, I just want to thank everybody who's been supporting me and subscribe into the YouTube channel. Make sure y'all subscribe, hit that like button, and let's go. You know, I got a very special, special guest and been knowing her since I was 18 years old, been knowing her for a long time and one of the realists on my team. You know, she also my secretary, my assistant for the show. If it wasn't for her, I would not be here today. So I wanted to get her on here so we can talk and we can chat it up about some real life issues. So. On further ado, let me call my guest, take y'all off of here. Yeah, about to get real. Shout out to everybody who's been supporting me. Well, hello. Hi. <laughs> can you hear me? I can. It's a little echo, but I can hear you. Okay, okay. Well, <laughs> welcome to the show. Finally. Hey, for the second time. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Oh, so you already know, you know, I, I gave you a good introduction and everything, you know, but I can't speak for you. So you okay. you can do that yourself, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I was just telling people that we go all the way back before I had a beard, before I had a mustache. Before I had swag, everything, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> way back. back. Mm-hmm. Mm. So what brings you on the number one podcast in Saginaw, Michigan? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you know. You know, you, you don't. This podcast does not speak on bullshit. Just the real shit. Mm-hmm. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. That's what I try to do. Yeah, I mean, you do a good job, you know, with history and real life shit and what people are going through. So let's talk about some real shit. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> so what do you want to yeah. talk about first? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm going with your flow. So just hit me. Okay, I want my viewers to look at her Jesse Smollett shirt. <laughs> Target, guys, Target. They have an African American section. And I was so shocked, but it's real nice. Right on, right on, right on. So, sure, you know what I'm saying? Considering that it is Black History Month, you know, I want to talk about, like, black love and, you know, black relationships. And because a lot of people don't understand that our relationships hit differently than anybody else, considering that we was, like, targeted by the major establishments. That's why these um, reality shows and, and stuff really um, is packing the airways because you know they want to keep us apart you know they want to separate us by all means and i wanted to you know talk about that 
but also, you know, talk about our personal experiences as, as well. Mm. So, but yeah, you know, it's just like what we discussed earlier. Um, you know, we've been through a lot, you know, as far as like our relationships, our past relationships and stuff like that. Um, so how about you give us like a story that you went through? It, it can be recent or it can be like in the past. Like one of the worst ever in my life. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay, let's talk about being the side piece. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that. That so that was like one of the worst experiences, like of my life. It was draining. It was serious. It's serious. I can't even say it. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it was suck you dry. It was suck you dry. Mm-hmm. Very toxic. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. So, so why do you think people put themselves in that position? In the first place. So there are many reasons. One reason can be because nine times out of ten, somebody lied about their situation and you're already sucked in and your feelings are going. So you're like, okay, I might as well stay in it. And then you get that thing called hope, hoping for a change. Mm -hmm. And while you're still sitting there hoping for a change, you're getting even deeper into that mess up situation. Um, and then it turns into competition. It turns into like, okay, so who can be that number one at that time? Or who can be the winner, the one that calls the shot? When at the end of the day, nobody's calling them shit. Mm -hmm. Nobody's winning. It's a losing situation, period. The only the only person that wins will be the one that gets out of that cycle. It's a messed up cycle. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. Because, you know, a lot of it becomes hereditary, too. You know, you watch, you know, from, you know, your, your mom being a side piece and then you, you know, you saw your father be a side piece too, so you think it's normal. Well, like, y'all can be side pieces too. Yeah, I mean, shoot, it, it's not no, it, it's just not no gender thing. It's a human thing, like. That's true. You know what I'm saying? You, you got a lot of niggas who, you know, have a, you know, a female brain. You know what I'm saying? Operate like a like a female. So, it just, a lot of us, you know, um, being raised. In a single parent household, we get female characteristics, you know, and we be messing with people that we shouldn't be messing with. But, you know, the bad girl or the bad boy m makes things interesting, you know what I'm saying? While the good person, like the good girl or the, the, the good boy and shit, they boring, you know what I'm saying? So you like to be on edge. You like a little excitement. And just that thrill of, you know, what if I can get caught type shit? You know, it just keeps everything um, at a, at a you know, standstill. But it's not healthy. And in this generation, they think um, toxicity is truly masculinity and femininity. And it's not. It's not at all. Well, you're like, bone thugs. I'm like, okay, go ahead. <laughs> Man, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm saying, like, you know, because me, me personally, you know, being a man and being a male, um, you know, I was, I was taught by, you know, older niggas that the only thing I'm good for is my sexuality. 
but I'm not, I wasn't taught that it's, it's my, my, my mind. It's my confidence. It's who I am and what I stand for. My integrity is what makes me a man. You know, um, any, any and everybody could have a dick, you know what I'm saying? Or a pussy, whatever. But it takes a real person to be able to raise that child or raise the children. You know, it takes a village. And I just think a lot of us just get those two misconstrued, you know. Do you agree? I do. And so what you just said, it brings me to how everybody should have more than for JJ and Wayne Damey to offer. Mm -hmm. There are so many relationships that are based off of Wayne Damey's and for JJ's. Not real love, not in love. You might not even like this nigga for nothing in the world. But that Wayne Damey is good. And so then you deal with the extra shit because it's so good. And it's not even worth it. Mm -mm. There's so much more to a human being. So the question is, what can somebody offer somebody other than sex? If I cannot be fucked mentally before the physical part, I don't even want it at this point. Right. Yeah, I mean, it just, a lot of people don't know what love is. They get that lust and love confused. And lust will get you in a world of trouble if you don't know what love is. And it's still like people in their 40s and 50s are still lusting. You know, they're not trying to seek for stability. They're not thinking long term. They just out here having fun. And I tell people this all the time, like, you know, how it is now, you know, 2022, how people in their 20s and 30s and 40s was acting like 60 years ago. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a totally difference now. Right. It's, 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 it's really more, you know, um, fuck that. I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't give a fuck what anybody think. This is my life. But it's just everybody... It's not thinking of the consequences. Because it's the consequences. There's rules. And you can't break the rules. It's still, you still got to follow rules and stuff like that in that type of situation. Absolutely. And, and if you're not ready to follow them, then what? <laughs> right. You know, you pretty much, you know, walking into a burning house. Because nobody's invincible. Nobody's untouchable. And especially with this karma thing, like, um, nobody's thinking about that. I think about that all the time. I think about the mistakes I made when I was hurt. And when I was hurt, you know, it was no hose barred. You know, I didn't care. I didn't have um, a conscience about what I was doing because I was already hurt, you know, so... I was already pretty much adding more insult to injury type thing. And a lot of people just be walking into people homes, you know, not just like literally, but just in a sense walking of into the, their situation, right? Yeah, just walking into their homes and don't take their shoes off or don't, you know, wipe their feet on the rug before they enter. They just come into people's houses. Um, ruining people's lives because they hurt, they in pain, and they try to give you like a sob stories or trying to paint themselves as the victim instead of taking accountability. And now I take a huge accountability of the choices that I made. You know, I realized that I wasn't always the good guy, but I wasn't always the bad guy. But I know that I hurt some hearts. I know that I lied to some people. I know I dogged some women out. But now I'm trying to right my wrongs just by, you know, staying on the right track. And it's just trying to let people know, like, 
hey, I'm not human. You know, I mean, I'm human. I'm not no saint. I ain't no angel, but I made some mistakes, and that's why I have a lot of wisdom to tell it. You know, I got a lot of stories to tell because of the experiences, and you know, and I'm not ashamed about the things that I've done. I'm not proud of everything, but it's not about being proud. It's about learning from your mistakes and your choices. So, so would you say that you learned a whole lot from that? Absolutely. <laughs> Never again. Mm -hmm. Ever. Never. It was the worst cycle of my life. Like, honestly, was it? Um, it took many nights of sleep. Um, somebody trying to humiliate me, like you know, if somebody didn't know me, which it didn't work, but like still, um, it took many packs of black to my lungs. It changed my whole attitude, my whole spirit. Um, it's just draining because it's a cycle. Like I, you know, it's it's it, it was bad. Like I would never in my life. Um, I don't want to be like play the second row because nobody had a number. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I would never put myself in that situation at all. And I do believe in karma. Absolutely. My situation now has been so different for like going on a year now, and I'm happy in it. But do I think about karma in my situation? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And the toughest thing about when you get your karma is having to take it. Cause you yeah, know, like, 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 how are you going to handle it? Yeah, because you know why it happened, but a lot of people don't acknowledge that it's it's karma. A lot of people just you know, sit back and think like, oh, this person broke my heart, this person hurt me, but you did it to somebody else. So you got to know what that person felt in order for you to know what you've done. And that's, I think that's a spiritual accountability in a way, you, you know, yeah. and just a lot of people just doesn't hold themselves accountable and I really um, had to work on myself. I really had to love myself um, to not allow myself to continue in something that's hazardous, that's that's not um, beneficial to my growth. That's what it's about. Yeah, it's about loving yourself. That's loving yourself. Um, that's what it's about. Yeah, because it's just a lot of work, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, if you um, cheating and shit, like, you gotta, you know, um, spend money on hotels, you gotta spend extra money on restaurants or going on dates and, you know, sneaking out, and you know, many hours on the night, late nights and shit, you know, it's just, it's just a lot of work. It's, it takes a, a lot out of you. And right. It's just a lot of people live in double lives. You know, if me, I don't live double lives, you know what I'm saying? I live my life, you know, now that I'm single, you know, I live my life, you know, I do me, but I also don't um, pretend that I'm not damaged or that I'm, I'm not, um, <laughs> that I can fall short, you know, and we all fall short, you know, but it's just a lot of people especially like the other person, you know, because a lot of times, you know, that person has a family, that person has kids, a wife, and it's just a lot of people don't think about that dynamic. And my personal life, I messed with a, a married woman before. And even though she initiated it, and even though she brought herself to me, I could have said no at any time. I could have refused. But at that time, I was selfish. You know, I was saying to myself, like, 
well, you know what I'm saying? He must not be hitting it right if she coming at me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but then I was just like, once it got too um, further, I was like, man, what the hell am I doing? Like, this is somebody's wife. This is somebody's mother. You know what I'm saying? If I get, a, if I get her pregnant or type of shit, then I would be, you know, the same equivalent of a home wrecker. I will be a home wrecker. Stuck in that cycle. Yeah. If you would have did shit like that. Yeah. And to everybody, you know, this was five years ago. I changed. <laughs> <laughs> I want everybody to think, like, oh, my God, like, the whole sort of ATL. <laughs> I'm like, no, but, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I was a different person in the past, so... That's why I could talk about it. But once I really started to think of the variables and think about, you know what I'm saying, what what can happen, you know, I had learned to, like, I got to end this. You know, I got to stop before it gets bad, you know, because uh -huh. the wages of sin is death. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's in every um, book. You know, from the Bible, the Quran, um, whatever book. <laughs> That's of um, every civilization is your misdeeds won't go unpunished. And right. and I just had learned that. So as a woman, you know what I'm saying? Beautiful woman at that. Um, <laughs> so the people... Um, put so much expectations on you or they make assumptions about yourself because you know what I'm saying it's just we gonna be honest you know like men put women who's attractive on a higher pedestal than the girl who may be like okay or she may be straight but you, you know what I'm saying, do you have to face anything like that, you know, from because people just has this thing like about pretty girls to be this and be that. So what you um, deal with? So sometimes I don't feel pretty all the time. Okay. I have my day. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Like right now I feel regular. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so what are you asking? Like, do I feel like people put me on the pedestal because I'm pretty? Yeah, they just make you feel like you're flawless and stuff like that. So, some days I am flawless. Mm -hmm. I'm a believer of that. Mm -hmm. I'm smart. My shit is together. Mm -hmm. I have great sex appeal. My skin is smooth. I know how to take care of whoever I'm with. Mm -hmm. Like, so I, so I don't know. Like, I, I don't even know how to answer that. Like, do I think people put me on a pedestal? I don't know. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. Mm -hmm. If niggas did put me on a pedestal, which stool was it? Because I would not have gone through so much heartache in my 38 years. I have gone through so many situations to where I have been called perfect. You're perfect. You do everything right, blah, blah, blah. But y'all motherfuckers still can't act right. So then when it's over, anybody that I have had before, nine times out of ten, I have heard from them again. Mm -hmm. They want to come back. Mm -hmm. So, I feel like I am on the pedestal, not at that time, but maybe later on when they thought the uh, grass was greener on the other side, and then they think about how Shelly was in their life. That's how I feel. Mm. But I don't think it has anything to do with being pretty. <clears throat> because hopefully if I, if I were ugly, I would still be the same person. Or do you think if I were ugly... Will, like, would I care about curtains and shit like that? Will I still want to get my nails done? Would I care about my hair? 
what do I care about how I smell? Like, I don't know. I don't know how ugly people move. <laughs> also, <laughs> what what is ugly to you could be beautiful. What What's ugly to me could be beautiful to you. So it is safe to say that nobody's ugly, though. Every, every motherfucker just looks different. Uh, well, some people is atrocious. You know, like I said, to me, I learned a long time ago, like, because I've been with some baddies and I've been with some people that look bad. But um, to me, I feel like it's, um, you know, mindset. Beauty, be, you know, beauty is a mindset. And That's right. if you look good on the outside and then you treat people okay. bad, okay. Yeah, yeah, it ruins a beautiful face. It's so true because... Um, I know everybody, you know, a lot of dudes be crazy over Megan Thee Stallion, but when I, once I heard this bitch talk for the first time and how she just be carrying herself, she's so non-attractive to me no more. Like, I don't, I don't find her irresistible. I, I think she a setup hoe, so that's why I got like... <laughs> Megan is like a thug, a, a sexy ass thug. She a whole nigga on the inside. Yeah, and that's um, hazardous because no real man <laughs> want that. You know what I'm saying? Who the hell want that type of drama? I don't want no drama. Like it's it's hard, you know. What it's it's hard, like you know what we go through. You know, we both are working individuals. So, you know, you got to, you know, you got kids, you know, you got children and stuff like that. So, you don't want no, like, toxic-ass nigga around you all day or no 24 hours a day when you got so oh, much on your minute, plate. Wait a minute. What if Megan is not like how she rests? <laughs> what if she likes to be in the garden planting flowers and she likes to make? homemade cookies in the kitchen and shit like that. We can't go off of her sounding manly and what she says. No, it's just, I don't watch what they say. I watch what they do. Because she ain't telling that whole truth about with, with Tori. Tori. How she got shot? Yeah, she ain't telling the whole truth. And that, I can't respect that. Because it's, cause it's like um, you're using this man's livelihood he could be deported not to return in America because he's from Canada, right? So you put in somebody's life and their reputation. It's the same thing with Rihanna. Like, tell the truth. Like, you may... About what? what did Rihanna do? You know, with the Chris Brown situation. You know, it's just, it's just that type... Um, yeah, she started it. She initiated it, but she let him take the fall. And she let him take the fall. Tori. Because all it takes is one time. And it's over. You know what I'm saying? It pretty much veto your career and veto your reputation. But the truth is it's going to always prevail. And I just wish that, you know, people really start telling the truth and just start taking personal accountability. Okay, like we're human. Like things happen. People fight. People yell. People, you know, put hands on each other. You know, police involved, this and that. But it just be a lot of, you know, skepticism with celebrities and because people don't know how to just take, you know, fantasy and reality. Reality is is that it's gonna be disagreements. It ain't going to be like, everything isn't going to be agreeable. It's going to be some type of conflict or a confrontation. But that's healthy. Once y'all can come to a common ground, it's just people don't want to compromise these days. And that's when I think um, the mighty has fallen because people don't want to compromise. They, people just think that things are supposed to go their way. And it'll work like that. And, you know, just like with you, you know, um, you know, congratulations on your recent um, union. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, you know, just like I told you on the phone, um, when you was telling me about, you know, 
certain people who wasn't um quite accepting of it. And I told him like shit, fuck them, man. It's this your life. You know, this is what you wanna do. And everybody don't have to understand it. Only person that needs to understand it, or well, only two people that need to understand it is you and your significant other. Everybody else can kick rocks. <laughs> Go find some business. Go do some soul searching them damn selves. Cause okay. can nobody tell me um what I want to do with my life and what I want. And it just it's a lot of times you we try to make the wrong people happy when we need to make ourselves happy. We gotta do what we can to make us happy because we gotta live with the choices we make. And that's why I told you before, like, I am so selfish with myself now. Like, I got to be selfish with myself. I have to be straight. I have to be happy. I have to maintain, like, my happiness and all of that. So I'm, I'm, I'm super selfish when it comes to myself now. When it comes to my heart, when it comes to what I do, I'm selfish as hell. And I'm happy about it. Mm -hmm. everybody should be more selfish <coughs> when it comes mm -hmm. to loving on just anybody mm -hmm. yeah. you can't love on everybody and you damn sure can't love on everybody the same goddamn way hell no because a lot of people um, is operating on survival absolutely because <laughs> like I said I have no problem with being with somebody who needs help, but let me know in the beginning. Don't try to. I don't even want that shit no more. Let me tell you, I am not a first aid kit. Mm -hmm. So I'm not healing nobody else. I can't heal nobody. Yeah, me either. I can't deal with no broken shit. But you know no what more. I'm. But you know what I'm saying, right? You know how people. Yeah, sure. How people um, try to you know lure you with love but they don't want that and they think survival is love but it's not it's not people throw that word love around like confetti <laughs> oh man yeah it's it's it, and it's and it's and it's really dangerous because like i said um people intentions be so foul like mm -hmm. And then, and then try to change or rewrite history and try to make it seem like, you know, they you didn't toss them up the first night, like like you um went to slay a dragon for them, but when you do it at me for free, pretty much. And I don't respect that. Cause I never, like I said, I never disrespected any woman. You know what I'm saying? If she promiscuous, then she's promiscuous. But I never really um, disrespected anybody. But once you disrespect me, it's over. Like, and you can't, you can't, um, can't save everybody. And some people just need to quit running from their demons and running from the devil. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes it ain't the devil. It's you. You know what I'm saying? Quit running from you and face you. You know, we all have to look in the mirror every day. Whether we brushing our teeth, washing our face, whatever. You know, getting the final um, look down before we walk out that door. You know, do it with your insecurities. Do it with your flaws. Do it with your problems. And I do. Cause I realized, shit, I'm a fucked up individual based on what I was, how I was raised and what I saw. And this is not like a attack on my mother, but it's just like, I'm, you know, my mom a human. You so not, you are not a fucked up individual anymore. Right. Okay. I have seen so many parts of you. I have seen the confused will, the struggling <laughs> will. How am I going to make it, Will? I don't want to be here anymore, Will. To, like, 
to who you are now. So you're not a fucked up individual. You might got some fucked up ways, but as an overall person, <laughs> you, you know, you're pretty, you're pretty good all around. You are a good person all around. Yeah. Thank you. You too. And I'm so, and I tell, and I tell people this all the time, like, um, you don't throw away the people that stuck by you through your toughest times when you wasn't 100%. I don't think anybody will ever be 100%, but I'm saying like people who already seen you at, at your worst and and still stuck it out. That's love. Like we don't have that no more. That's real friendship. And right. it's just people just want the, the benefits, but they don't want to stick by you through the hard times. Rock bottom is real, you know. <laughs> and a lot of people right. left me while they was on rock bottom. And I would have never left them. Even when I was depressed, I still remained a good person. I still remained, you know, true, even though I was broken. Um I didn't let everybody, you know, try to put me back together. I had to solve my own puzzle. Every day. Mm-hmm. Every hour. And then... Every minute. Can you imagine an elephant... Imagine an elephant standing on this grain of rice. That's, that's how heavy that shit is, though. So that, you know, that's some heavy shit. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I I just I just realized that everybody isn't us, you know and what I enjoy about our bond is the fact that we can apologize to each other you know, if we ever like felt wronged or something happened, cause you know, it's just like you told me before you know, that when I disappear <laughs> It's not intentionally. It's just how I am, you know, but I'm getting better at that. I'm getting better by, with my communication. But it's just people just leave the good people behind and then cry when they don't have nobody or and say nobody loves them, but you had somebody that loved you. You didn't cherish that. You didn't appreciate that. How do you expect somebody to just stick around? You know, I'm not no antique leather jacket that's in like your mama's closet or your grandma's closet, and you go pick it up when you're ready to wear it. That's not me. I have feelings, and and what people don't understand is that time. You can never get it back. So when you put time in a person. And it, and, it, and it's the time that make people snap. It's not the sex. It's not the the money. It's not the gifts, the perks. It's the time. The time make a yeah. motherfucker like, man, fuck this shit, bitch. <laughs> I'll kill you. All right. Give me my minute back, nigga. Yeah. Give me that good minute back. And can't even get it back. Yeah. And, and, it's, and, and so when I'm talking about the cycle, that's what the hell I'm talking about. It's like the cycle is, okay, give me that time back, and then boom, you in love again. So here you are, wait some more time, wait some more time, you want it back. And then you giving it back, and you want it back, and you giving it back. Life is too short for that. Life is too short for anybody to settle, for anybody to be in any situation that they don't want to be in. Life is too, like, it's, it's too short not to be happy. That's why I had to deactivate my Facebook. It's too much shit going on. Mm -hmm. People are dying every single day. Yeah. That's why I'm taking myself back emotionally and physically. I'm taking myself back. Um, because life is too short. There's not enough time. I don't have time for anybody else to drain the shit out of me. To love me and then act like I am just disposable. Right. Like, I don't have time for any of that shit. The happiest moment of my life in any relationship is right here, right now. It's not hard. It's not hard to give my 1,000% to this man. It's not hard at all. When shit is not easy, 
when shit is not at the end of the day i feel like everything should be easy nothing should be forced it should not feel like a tug of war between like like nothing this is the happiest i have ever been and it's so easy it's so easy to love on who i'm loving and and, and to get that shit back one thing i said after my last situation and the last situation last situation before that because that shit was horrible i would say what i said was the same type of love i give the wrong niggas i need that back from the right one mm -hmm. and that's what i'm getting back right now and can't nothing fuck that up and i'm not doing anything to fuck that up i will not i'm happy and i will never like that was a lesson learned mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it's like like if i die right now i can say if i die right now everybody can be like well damn at least she died happy last year the year before if i died then y'all have been like damn wasn't that blah 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 <laughs> i know her stuff was fucked up <laughs> you feel <me>? yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you know and that's and and I, and I say that too because you know, like I said, you you see me when when I was at my worst, mm -hmm. and that's why I'm grateful that I pulled myself together because I I couldn't let that be the last chapter of my life. Cause you know, people would talk shit. People would be like, man, like he ain't recovered from losing his brother. Like and that, I couldn't let that be a traumatic um, demise. Like. Shakespeare sites type story, you know, I wanted to be a um, survival uh, survivor story. I didn't want to be a victim story. And so many victim stories of people not being able to put themselves back together. And you can put yourself back together. It takes work. It's a lot of work to um, redeem yourself from certain relationships and certain things. But I would say, like, whoever's my wife, oh, man, she going to be she going to be pleased from all the stuff I've done. <laughs> all the all the tr tricks I learned. <laughs> yeah, you are definitely, if you find, like, that person, <laughs> you a whole gold mind, though. Like, you ain't got, you have no children. Your mm -hmm. fear grows back when you want it to grow back. You work. Your teeth are white. <laughs> and if whoever you choose this has no ass, you got enough for both of them. <laughs> like, you are doing 100% all around perfect. Oh, no, you did it. <laughs> no, you did it. Hey, man. Hey, hey. Yes, yes. Anyway. You know, that's just something that I always had. So, but yeah, it ain't, it ain't no Rikishi or nothing like that. But hey, man, it's me, you know, because a lot of people, you know, like I said, a lot of people be insecure about their body and their weight. And I love myself. You know, God gave me my, my look and my visual, with well, a visual for a reason. And... A lot of people doesn't um, accept who they are. You know, it's, it's some, that's why so many people be going to get plastic surgery. I won't change your thing on me because what can you say about me that I haven't heard already? Like I heard and had so many people talk about my weight, talk about me and this and that. But now I use that shit as confidence. Like, yeah, I'm this. But watch me pull this and watch me get with this. You know what I'm saying? And it will leave you wondering because you got to try harder. You got to pull out a lot of money to have a pill while I can use my mind. I can use my confidence. I can use my lovely hygiene because I smell good. And, you know, I keep my hair cut, beard trimmed and dress nice and this and that. But like I said, it's just... People just doesn't um, think that they can be who they are. They want to be somebody else. And and I just think that the social media um, stuff really made that worse because 
you know, they think the the glamour and the glitz is real and it's not. And you got to have something to offer besides the stuff that's an illusion. Everything is an okay. illusion. But I just love the fact that, you know, you we do have like particular platforms and particular uh, resources that help us to, you know, connect with people. And I have just connected with hundreds of people, thousands of people, just by being myself. And I'm like I said, I'm was really excited about this when we first decided to do this because it just a lot of people really wouldn't know unless we talked on here, you know, and, and, and told <laughs> people. So. But yeah, um, from when you started with that situation until now, would you um, go back to your old self and warn yourself you think your old self will listen or you think your old self will tell you like, you know, you don't know what you're talking about and this and that. I'm going to just take this you know, like I take other things. So would you um be willing to warn yourself or you would just let your, yourself learn the hard way? I'm never learning the hard way with anything again. I don't give a damn if it's about a meal. Okay? <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I, yeah, I'm not doing it. I'm not. I might, I, I refuse to put myself, you know, through some um, some crazy shit like that again. Like I said, I'm 38, 38 you want to be 39 this year. And that was like, that shit was horrible. The worst part, though, is, like, so during that time, one of my awesome friends, that I've been knowing for maybe about 15, 20 years, what he told me was, yeah, you look good externally, but internally, like, like what's going on? So that was a check, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because to allow anybody that would <clears throat> allow themselves to be in a situation like that, it says a lot about how you feel about yourself so on the inside. Oh yeah, I agree. Like we can lie to everybody else, but you can't fool the empath. <laughs> yeah, because energies. Narcissistic ways, like that's some real shit. Narcissists. Mhm. Mm they motherfuckers are sick. You hear me? Mhm. Mm they need a um, disability check. Yeah, and the that's, that's a whole damn. Yeah, and the worst part is that they're among us. They can be anybody. They can be in our family members, our shit, yeah. lovers, everybody. And that's a sick, well, it's a sickness that's um, hitting. It's a behind closed door illness. And that's what's scary about it. Because a lot of people isn't aware of of that and don't know the trace, don't see the signs. You know, you really have to, you know, study this on YouTube to understand because that's what I had to do. You know, I was messing with a narcissist. You know, I was messing with a, a con artist, a man, master manipulator, um, character assassinator, all types of stuff. And that's some cold shit. Say that again. Character assassinator. <laughs> a nigga that kills your character. Yeah. That's some sick shit. Mm hmm Yeah, you know, and they go after people like us. Cause they know they ain't shit. They know they ain't they nobodies, you know what I'm saying? So they go after the people like us who have good hearts. Mm -hmm. And that's why I tell people like you got to get to know people because 
patterns always tells the truth about a person. So I just want, you know, just for this episode, I just want people to just, you know, learn from our past mistakes, <laughs> our past choices. Because if they consider it. Oh, absolutely. Who do I look at? Oh, um, sure. You, well, when you get your page back. <laughs> I'm still so searching. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Like I said, when but you. But after this spirit is back, you say what? Well, like I said, when you get your page back, you will um be able to read the comments and stuff. And then, um, we go, we go take it from there, but. Um, I just think that it, this was well needed because a lot of people are w- walking into a trap thinking that it's okay to be second place and it's not. It's not. Because you would never um, be valued. You would be uh, undesirable. And, you know, you just should... You deserve more than that. You know, don't ever put yourself in anybody else's game, in anybody else's um, clutches if, if if it's nothing being reciprocated. And that's what I learned because, you know, I was being abused like a motherfucker. Like, I had to be abused mentally and psychologically before I was abused emotionally and physically. And it was the worst time of my life because it just, people didn't think that I could be a victim. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) They don't think men could be victims. You know what I'm saying? Because they're like, oh, you big, you strong, you tall. What the fuck? You know, and I'm like, no, I'm a good person. I have a delicate heart. I have a 90s R&B heart, you know, <laughs> slow jam, quiet storm heart, you know, so it was just like, damn, like, how could how, how you want me to suffer? How you want to mistreat me when I've been good to you? You know, and it was hard, but it was a lesson learned because I'm not putting up with that shit again. And if I see one red flag, I ain't going to wait to the motherfucking Olympics. Or the... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to wait to the true colors on a peacock at the NBC logo. I'm out. <laughs> okay, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You just going to have to... Only way you're going to see me is online. But you ain't going to see me again physically. But but yeah, I'm really proud of you, and I'm really happy for you. And um, like I said, it's just really hard to find good, genuine people. You know, you watch me grow up from a boy to a man, and I would have not made it this far just with the show. Like I always tell people that it was your idea for me to bring guests and bring. Um, the interviews, you know, I always tell people that I never take credit for that. I tell everyone that you had a real significant part into making this show pop and making it what it is. And, Thank you. And laughing at my own drunk moments. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but yeah like I said I just appreciate everything that you have done for me and just you know staying down for me when I was down and you know you helped me lift and pick myself back up and and because of you I haven't lost faith in humanity (laughs) <laughs> or 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 uh, real real women, because it's just everybody just has this thing that you know 
the hoes is just winning, but the Israel women that's winning. The w real women are winning. You know, it's just all you know goes with perception, what you what you perceive. But I just try to just explain to people um, that I'm just a man that took back his life. I'm still working on me. I'm still healing. But, you know, when you go through something like that, um, even though that chapter is closed, what you um, absorbed or what you soaked up, it, it, it ain't over. So it takes a lot of work to get rid of those type of things and what made you go back to that, you know, trash in the first place. So that's why I just make sure that, you know, I stay busy, I stay focused. And, you know, I just want us to thank you for coming on here. You know, I know that you um, got some motherly duties to do. <laughs> okay. You saw my little baby, he tried to pop up on the side. I was like, uh uh. Go back upstairs. Uh uh. Get him. Take him back upstairs. Uh uh. But yeah, um, I'm gonna put this on YouTube, you know, make a lovely thumbnail out of this. Uh -huh. But this is this is so good. I you know, like I said, we gonna do this again in person too, so but I just think um, that this was a really good, great one. I, lo I love this one. <laughs> good. So to sum it up, if, if, you, if you're going to sum it up, mm -hmm. to sum up this little episode, what would be the quote, the sum up quote? <laughs> um <laughs> beware of devil in a, in the blue dresses and devils who wear black do rags. <laughs> okay. Mine will be if you're not first, you're cursed. Mm. Who yeah, got chills over my spine from that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. But yeah, um, Miss Miss Rich, <laughs> I'm gonna um shut this down because my phone dying. But yeah, All right. just wanted to say thank you for coming. And you always welcome at the 1804 show, chapter two. Always. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.